Welcome to the Possibility Action Network podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Middleton, a.k.a. Possibility Man. We're committed to bringing you guests who strive to better people's lives and serve as a force for good in the world. Our guest today is Grace Mayan Fu. She's raising awareness about the importance of financial literacy and empowering people to protect and in some cases restore their financial health. She talks about mastering the game of wealth. Grace helps people identify safety nets to navigate the financial storms of life and shows them how to grow and thrive in the midst of these challenges. She serves entrepreneurs and business owners, individuals and families. In a word, everyone but she also works as a nurse and she works and she serves nurse practitioners in how to develop financial strategies grace welcome to the show today thank you Stephen. great to be here with you aloha wonderful to have you aloha look i have a lot of questions to ask but first mm -hmm. let's note to our listeners and our viewers your support matters so follow like and share this podcast wherever you find it. Grace, I've been looking forward to talking with you for a long time because you have two domains that fascinate me. On mm. the one hand, nursing and health, and on the other yep. hand, financial fitness. So let's start with, with health. But um, look, those of us who live on the mainland consider Hawaii <laughs> to be, you know, just paradise. Did you grow mm -hmm. up in Hawaii or did you migrate to Hawaii? Yeah, so well, it was a... Yeah, it was a slow journey, right? Uh, grew up in Southeast Asia, actually. That's where my family came from, uh, Malaysia and Singapore. And uh, I was born in Hong Kong because my parents were missionaries and then went to college in the Boston area. So mm -hmm. that is when that whole journey migrating westward started. Uh, so lived in different parts of the country. Uh, prior to Hawaii was in L.A. because uh, that's where my wow. parents lived. And as the kids were growing up, it's kind of like, well, let's spend time getting to know them, right? Having them in our lives is important. Um, and then in 2008 was when uh, we came here for a long vacation and kind of never left. So that's what happened. Okay. Well, must be a nice place to live. So what drew you to nursing? Hmm. So the thread, right, of my life uh, has always been making a difference in someone's life, creating that positive impact. Uh, and what are those solutions that really make sense? Uh, started in the health realm and uh, going from conventional medical to then holistic medicine, doing independent research. Uh, and then when COVID came, I needed to make a pivot. And so now it's looking at what are the answers to these medical GoFundMes? Can we really make a dent in this crisis that we have in the country, right? And uh, doing the research there now uh, reveals that there are some pretty progressive companies out there doing some important work uh, that is really making a huge difference in middle America in terms of how we can even begin to survive um, you know, financially in the high inflation arena, uh, and then also rising taxation. My land taxes got doubled this year. I had no say about that. So how do you navigate environments like that uh, where, you know, you can then have different options, you know, to uh, have answers to stuff like that? Mm -hmm. I understand. Now, but before you got into your work, you know, as a financial strategist, mm -hmm. you took a deep dive into health and wellness. And so did you gravitate away from a traditional nurse practice into alternative or complementary areas, or was it all the same for you? Well, it was uh, seeing that the system's not working, right? Uh, if I'm about things that work that don't cause side effects for folks, the conventional arena wasn't really the right fit for me. And really, uh, then it's uh, branching out to look for solutions that can really make sense for folks. And if there's something that works out there, I want to test it too to validate it and put numbers around it so that we can see the efficacies of these modalities. Yeah. And okay. because that working piece really matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I like about people like you is that you come from a traditional, you know, science nursing background, and then you're able to evaluate and research other mod modalities. What, what mm -hmm. kinds of new things did you discover out there that could support people in protecting their health? 
Holy cow. Uh, the most transformational stuff is actually the simplest things. Yeah, going back to nature is a big one. And we've lived such a disconnected life in our modern world, you know, and I think being in Hawaii is definitely one of those uh, biggest lessons that I've had to learn because when I moved here, uh, Stephen, in 2008, I didn't even know how to put up a tent. So first rains come and we get a lot of rains here in the rainforest, our tents collapse and friends had to come and in five minutes they were able to put up, you know, these, uh, these tents for us. And so, um, just realizing within myself, you know, that learning curve that I needed. And it was the same in finances as well. Uh, so the health things, it's really, for me, returning back to nature and permanent healing happens only at the consciousness level. So am I getting more and more away from the physicality of healing? Absolutely, yes. And talking more about the spiritual stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you also talk about um, self-healing, healing, that it's, at mm -hmm. least you used to. Um, that is I still do. For, I still okay, do. Yeah. For, okay, for a person to activate yes. their self healing, what what did you what do you mean by that? Well, I was just talking to a friend this morning, right? Uh, when you reach a consciousness level of five hundred and forty, this is according to Dr. David R. Hawkins' work. Um, he's no longer with us, but his body of work is, you know, still left with us. So if you look at that scale of human consciousness, uh, you basically then embody that divine love, which is, uh, you know, then becoming self-healing. Yeah. So um, when we're so concerned about, you know, all the things that are happening in our physical world, you know, you have a very different experience when you live in a different level of consciousness. And do we stratify it? When I say that, it's really, do we uh, go back and forth? Absolutely, until we are fully developed and can completely transcend the human ego itself. Um, you know, that's the journey that I'm going through right now. It's yeah. just learning I, mm -hmm, every day. Uh, yeah, I hear you. And look, I got to press you a little bit on this one because I, yeah. I'm intrigued by this because there's some people who are dealing with some chronic conditions mm -hmm. that are outside of both the traditional medicine box it also seemed to be beyond, you know, some complementary like mm -hmm. homeopathy and things like that. I'm talking about muscular dystrophy, for example, or mm -hmm. multiple sclerosis. From your sense of it, is it possible for a person to experience a kind of regenerative health, even in difficult areas like those that I've mentioned? Well, it takes the whole jalopy. When I say that, Stephen, is really what is the spiritual will, right? What is the karmic propensity of that soul? And then based on your willingness in terms of being open to all levels of healing beyond the physical is emotional healing, uh, mental healing. When I say that is really the mental health piece yeah, is a part of being human and then also healing those karmic propensities. And so for me, do I like to support a human, you know, holistically to heal? Absolutely. Yes. And that that financial piece, the reason that I'm even going there is because that is such a big piece. If that house is not in order, people don't even have the bandwidth or the potential, I shouldn't say potential, the the breathing room to even begin to self-actualize, right? And that self-actualization right. piece is part of that healing process. Understood. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you've, you've talked about, uh, or at least written about little snippets about polyvagal um, yes. Would you educate, just give us a, a sense of what that is, polyvagal. Yeah. Polyvagal. So Stephen Porges' work, right? So, so important when it comes to understanding how the nervous system works and beyond the nervous system, which is part of being human, is just understanding how the body works is your meridian system, which traditional Chinese medicine have known for thousands of years. They're interpolated, meaning they're layered upon each other. So you have the physical life. And then, you know, we run that physical life in terms of connection to all the organs through your nervous system. So when we can activate a restorative, regenerative mode, because today's modern life tends to put people into fight, flight, freeze, which then mm -hmm. activates the limbic system, which is catabolic. Yeah. So when you're talking about fight, flight, freeze, it's the unhealthy mode of the nervous system. The body is never meant to stay in it chronically. And so... If we're thinking about chronic disease as habits, how can we shift those habits while creating new ones and adopting new habits so that we can have a very different outcome? 
So Einstein, when he talks about if we keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result, that's never going to happen, is yeah. really along the same principle of um, just understanding how things work and working it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Well, we, now, polyvagal is not a word that we use a lot today, but I saw it <laughs> as I got to know you a little better. Yeah. So look, I want to shift a little bit now to financial sure. education, because I know you spend a lot of time talking to people about, about this area. But I think, though, a good place to start is your own testimony mm -hmm. as a nurse to financial crisis to wherever you are today. Can you just give us a, some insights into your own journey? Yeah, absolutely. So yesterday in a LinkedIn post, you know, I mentioned that, you know, it was 53 years old three years ago and uh, didn't have a retirement, went through a super rough divorce, financially devastated, never got the financial education as a nurse with a four year degree. Yeah, in the United States. And that's probably the bulk of us. And so understand the pain of that journey in terms of where I landed and looking at retirement, you know, uh, 10, 20, 15 years from now, it's like it's not even a possibility at the time. So what is my choice at that moment in terms of finding the solutions to have a different result? So, you know, when we're ready, universe always answers. And that's my trust in how things work. And uh, I had a friend who was in BNI and she basically introduced me to my current platform, which I got the financial education to fix my own situation. And once I was able to heal financially, I was able to impact my own family. So my kids are set up very differently. Their kids are going to be set up very differently. And then from there is that ripple out to the community in terms of service of how I can impact lives, knowing yeah. that that financial house is so key to that connection to health. Yeah. Good. So great. how long did it take you to turn your situation around? That is <laughs> when you begin to see yeah. some light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So... Obviously, everybody's journey is going to be different, right, Stephen? So I was able to replace my very uh, five very part-time nursing jobs my first year and then also my business income because I lost that through COVID, right, in 2020. And that was the pivot that I needed. And um, today, I basically use the bulk of my time to do these financial literacy education programs with folks uh, with you know within my community locally and also obviously virtually as well these days. We can do that through Zoom. Um, yeah, so it can turn around very quickly. I've seen people turn things around, you know, in a few months. I've also seen people take a lot longer and that's fine. That's their own personal journey. And Understood. Yeah. Understood. So mm -hmm. is it possible for a person, because a lot of us use money, <laughs> but we don't of understand, course. we're not smart <laughs> about it. And you talk about smart money, or be, or I think you, you call it money, in quotes, money smart. What are some of the elements, as you see it, to being smart about money? Well, the first thing I did was look at what uh, the people in the know did, right? Because they are the ones who can guide you. And so looking at uh, principles that they adopted in their own lives and also their portfolio, what kinds of tools are they tapping into and what really makes sense, right? If we're given the options of being able to use um different types of tools to impact different areas of dealing with money. And we have access to, you know, um, some of the more progressive companies tools out there uh, that can really make a difference in terms of uh, tax advantages or being able to create the safety nets that you talked about where, you know, one of the biggest things that wipe families out today in middle America is bankruptcy from getting sick. Right. And so are there tools out there that can mitigate those kinds of risks? Absolutely. And finding out about those tools have made a tremendous difference, not only in my own life, but my family's life, my community's life and people that I serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, some people say that um, when it comes to financial education, it's really about people who got money who want to make more money. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, where can yeah. people start if they don't have a lot of money or is this? Is this for everyone or is this for a select few individuals? Well, if you think about, you know, the potbelly middle America kind of an S-curve, right? The majority of the people in terms of the masses is what we want to serve. Why is that? Because they're also our tax base. When we can turn that tide for, you know, the masses, then we're able to shift the tide of our country. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, 
the thinking that I came from, right? Coming from middle America, same thing, same thing as everybody else is linear, make money, spend money. Right. Yeah. So the new thing that I had to learn was how do you create a circular economy where you can leverage every single dollar now to become an employee to then earn for you for the rest of their life. That was a whole different way of thinking. And so when you can leverage those kinds of tools that you can collateralize to do that, then it changes the whole entire outcome on the other end because numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I'm a data person. Um, when it comes to knowing whether something works, numbers can always uh, show us the way. Yeah. You know, um, the word disruptive is used a lot these days in mm -hmm. a variety, variety of spaces. Yes. And you talk about disruptive wealth solutions. Can you kind of walk us through what you, what you mean? Yeah. So traditionally, I'll just use my own nursing background, right? Co going into the nursing profession and HR telling you, okay, Gracie, it's time for you to get a 401k. But nobody handheld me as far as, uh, you know, educating me in terms of how a 401k works, how a 401k doesn't work. You know, are there other alternatives to a 401k that could work better? So that's just one idea. And then also in terms of life insurance, how can we leverage those tools besides using it when we die, you know, to use it ahead of time for when we get sick. And that's one of the major tools that I love to educate on in terms of living benefits that can really make a difference in someone's financial uh, outcomes on the back end to mitigate these risks that can come and basically protect people's assets in a way that uh, would be unimaginable even 20 years ago. So... You know how we upgrade phones and yeah. our tech? Yeah. So same thing with our financial tools, right? We need to be uh, educated, number one, to know what's out there. And if we can find a person who we can trust and that can be independent, you know, that's non-captive. When I say that really is uh, they can shop for you. They can really look in the market and the industry and do yeah. the research that's necessary to really show you the way. Because when you're summoning Mount Everest, we all need a trustworthy Sherpa to be able to show us the way. So, you know. That's you so know, true, that, Grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's so true because there's so many choices that mm -hmm. you get to make, right? You know, if you, you have, may have the choice of a 401k, yep. or you may have the choice of a state-sponsored retirement right. plan. And sometimes the, the people who are talking <laughs> to you aren't always giving you the right advice because of their of their self interest as mm -hmm. opposed to. Mm -hmm. opposed exactly. To What's interest. your best yeah. interest? What's the best interest for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, that should be the industry standard. And, you know, um, however, how we live that is a whole different ballgame altogether. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Chris, so let's look at just, a, you know, let's say just pick a person at age 30. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what what are some of the elements? If they say, look, I want to create wealth as a goal, let's say 25. They're out of college. They're starting a family. They're mm -hmm. in their prime, 25 years of age. What kinds of things should they be considering if they want to truly build wealth? Yeah, so if they are, time? yeah, love that question. So if they are just starting out in life, one of the huge advantages of someone in their 20s is really uh, playing the multiplication game, right? How do you leverage the rule of 72, which is compounding interest over time? And someone in their 20s will have over 40 years to compound grow money inside of. Uh, for me, I would definitely pick a non-taxable vehicle, that would be my first choice. And compared to something that is tax deferred or taxable, you know, it's just uh, much better as an advantage. The other ways would be to look at things that will give you uh, protection when it comes to, you know, as you're starting out in family, you know, if you have a home, you know, how would you protect that? In a case of beyond death, it's like, when I get sick and I have no income coming in, are there tools that can help me mitigate those payments and that I can get uh, paid ahead of time, you know, from a life insurance policy that can take care of things? And so, um, you know, those are probably the two principles I love to leverage is uh, that rule of 72 in terms of compounding grow, uh, growth in terms of over time and then obviously uh, creating vehicles or buckets, I call them, that are non-taxable so that I don't even have to deal with that down the line. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, do you think that, um, let's say insurance policies are important in a person's portfolio, whole life term? What, what are you what's your thinking about that? Well, the hottest product right now out there that's 10 
quarter straight number one in the nation is an index universal life. Yeah. So that brings us to the next piece where I actually don't even want to have any market loss. You know, imagine mm-hmm. someone saving in a vehicle that has zero market loss compared to someone who does. Uh, okay. Even can, just can, can, can I press a little bit on this one? So yeah. let's go back to this twenty-five year old, and they're trying mm-hmm. to think about how do I build my financial portfolio. I mean, would an index fund be something for them to look at, or? So would be an absolutely, you know, index universal life. That's what I have my kids set up on. Uh, Inside of that million dollar policy, not only do they have the living benefits from the top company, where if anything happens, yeah, if they have terminal stuff going on, if they have chronic stuff, critical stuff, even Alzheimer's, Lewy body dementia, uh, it's huge to have those kinds of protections because we can't guarantee our health. Yeah, that's one thing that can totally wipe up. Uh, wipe out wipe out a family in terms of their finances. Um, and then the other thing it allows the kids to do is to basically, I call them kids because I just turned 56, you know, a couple months ago, uh, is to be able to then accumulate wealth, you know, without market loss inside of a non-taxable vehicle when you take it out the right way. Yeah. And mm-hmm. collateralize those accounts to create that circular economy that I talked about where you can um, cycle money out for investments, cycle money out for buying properties, which is what my kids are doing. And then also, yeah, to basically buy businesses as well. Right. So that's the, we're talking about the early end, you know, if you're mm-hmm. young, what if someone is, let's say, 70, at mm. least 70 years of age? Uh, what kinds yeah. of things would you encourage them to, to think about? So in the later years, right, it's really taking a holistic look at how things are positioned and how can we optimize their current positioning so that they can earn better, number one. And as we're aging up, one of the biggest factors that eat away at our retirement savings is market loss. And we can't afford to have market loss because we literally have no time to recover. So I would usually love to have a conversation and education session to uh, empower folks to maybe look at some other options um, that can position them a little bit better. Yeah. And so there are still ways to navigate that financial uh, path forward, even in the 70s. Yeah. So what you're saying is that, you know, there's something available for us, mm-hmm. no matter what season we are yep. in in life. Uh, is that about what you're saying, suggesting to us? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm even for those who don't have as much time as the younger person in their 20s, right? There are still Mm -hmm. tools out there that are relatively uh, powerful in a short period of time. You can basically get guarantees. Uh, I love guarantee contracts, you know, because Mm -hmm. those are the ones that can really give predictability. And to me, that's important because guaranteed lifetime incomes allows someone to have dignity when it comes to retiring. Um, Unlike the traditional ways of doing retirement uh, where you don't have the guarantees, you know, where your money do run out, you know, when you can have uh, tools that you can tap into to give you that guaranteed lifetime income, it changes the whole financial picture on the back end. Yeah. You know, some, some people would say, in fact, I've heard someone say this to me that in terms of guaranteed financial instruments, Mm. it's really for these rich people who are lawyered up. You know, who have these tax attorneys who could help them protect their assets. Well, Obviously. that's because they don't know companies like us where we actually uh-huh. are serving middle America, right? And we are serving the masses because that's where you can make these massive financial shifts in, uh, you know, in that economy itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I also ask you this, and this is almost parenthetical, but I got to ask, yeah. are there opportunities for people today we live in the United States, but let's say elsewhere, as to make money beyond their, you know, their W two jobs or their nine to five jobs. Are there opportunities to? Of course, add and more today? and more so. Yeah, more and more so, and that's what I did. Right, having a plan B in case my plan A failed, and during COVID, my plan A did fail, and so uh, it allowed me to create a whole different economy for myself. You know, living on a rock in the middle of the ocean, having access to all fifty states, being able to do business remotely. And when I say this, you know, I was handheld from the very beginning with my company, and to have the mentorship and the training. Uh, that is top notch within the industry. Uh, Has it changed my life? Absolutely. Yes. You know, today I get to basically um, create the kind of life that I choose instead of being dictated by five very part-time nursing jobs and having to run my own business. Yeah. 
Okay. So I want to be clear about something here. And um, <laughs> it's possible to make money. You've just established that. And people who have jobs are making money. Now, next, is it possible to transfer this money to your heirs? Because you also talk about, mm -hmm. let me get this right. You talk about creating a financial legacy. How is yes. that possible? Well, when you have instruments where you can completely eliminate taxation in wealth transfers. Yeah. And that's the legacy that we get to leave to our heirs. And something that we can never control is taxation. Estate taxes changes all the time. So when we can have instruments to be able to give us additional cash flow to be able to mitigate those kinds of situations, however, that is going to shift in the future and to have that assurance that it'll be there for us. Yeah. You know, we live mm -hmm. in an age now, Grace, if you, you know, every time I open up my Gmail, I'm getting <laughs> offers from all over mm -hmm. the world. And it's hard for a person to sort through mm -hmm. what's legit and what's not legit. Do you have any advice for us? Sure. So doing the due diligence, right? Looking into the company's financials, I would advise someone uh, or suggest that they look into the company's financials four years back. And really look at, you know, the ratings of these companies beyond that uh, is really tapping into someone in the know and to be able to take you by the hand and really show you the way. Uh, I think that to me was my life changer uh, to be able to have that as a resource. But there's a lot of things that we can look up on our own. So don't just leave it on a Google search. Oh, you know, that's it. Dive a little deeper, you know, go look at exactly what the company is about and what kinds of things are they offering? Is it really to my full advantage and true advantage and to my benefit to leverage them versus somebody else? Yeah, because mm -hmm. the right knowledge and information is truly powerful out there mm -hmm. because it can shift entire generational trajectories. Right. You know, um, as I looked at your at you on um, social media, mm -hmm. I saw something regarding it's possible for a person to create a guaranteed income for life. Yes. And I paused at that one. And I, yeah. I, can you tell us how how is that possible today? Or are you talking well, about are you talking about Social Security? No, Social Security, you know, <laughs> is not what okay. I'm talking You're about. Talking you can't about even that. Okay. Yeah, survive on how much you get paid on Social Security these days, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I just mentioned my land taxes got doubled. So um, there are companies out there who are doing tremendously progressive work in terms of having a heart-centered business. And I'm talking, you know, about... Uh, companies that I love to work with uh, when they're people-centric, they have solutions that are really focused on uh, solving people's problems. And one of those things that got me connected to some of the companies that I'm working with today is really the solutions for these medical GoFundMes, right? Because it can really wipe out middle America because that is a segment of the population that has no safety nets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, look, um, those are the kinds of things I wanted to talk with you about, but I got one more question for you, Grace. Okay. Is there anything else you want to share with us that we haven't touched on today? Well, ultimately, it is uh, taking full advantage and being empowered to take that financial uh, piece of our lives that we're so scared of because I was in that position, yeah, just even three years ago to want somebody else to take care of it because I didn't have the education or the tools or access to the tools to be able to do it myself. When we can tap into the right resources to take over that piece, if you ask yourself this simple question, who is going to have the greatest financial interest or the, the best interest for my financial situation down the line? It's nobody else but yourself. So when That's we sure. can, yeah, when we can get educated, right? And it can be so simple because it doesn't have to be complicated, yeah? And the things that we get to learn from that process then can empower not just our generation, but generations to come to shift that whole entire picture for the long term. Yeah. yeah. Well, Grace, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show to share your knowledge. and Thank you, Stephen, for having me. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've been listening to the Possibility Action Network. Our guest today has been Grace May Yen Fu. I'm your host, Stephen Middleton. Until next time, good day. <laughs>